Howdy y'all. So today we are going to go over cowardice and how it has zero place in Christianity. Uh, this is something that our generation has uh, struggled with. Uh, we tend to worry way too much about pleasing men and their opinions and everything else. Uh, Jesus tells us in chapter 10 verse 28, and fear not them which can kill the body, but they are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to, destro able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Thing is, though, we haven't even really begun to face real persecution here in the West. But we're still afraid to fight and stand up. We use excuses like, pick your battles or it's not worth a fight and those are just straight up excuses to sweep our cowardice under under the rug it's it's ridiculous why are we like this why do we constantly do this why do we think that jesus isn't worth standing up and fighting for not that he needs us to fight for him but our faith does um I don't know. I don't know whether it's the fact that we're a generation of raised by women, and as such, the men never matured from boyhood, or the social justice religion that's been indoctrinated into us since birth, or is it the overstimulation and oversexualization of our entire generation that Satan's forced on us that we most of us accepted with open arms? I mean, it, I, I tend to think it's all three of these and a whole lot more. Uh, I don't know. He, Satan's perverted this world for way too long, and the least we can do is stand up, draw a line, and refuse to be pushed past it. Um, Jesus told us not to worry about those who can kill the body. But... We're not even afraid of being killed. We're afraid of standing out, of being ostracized from society, of not being normal. Look around. I don't want to be normal. Normal is weird. Normal is just straight-up degeneracy these days. So just quit worrying about being ostracized. I welcome the day that I, that I am truly ostracized. Is it scary? Yes, it is. It is terrifying, but being scared and being a coward is two different things. So, it's a necessity. Society is evil, and as Christians, we need to stand out and stand up and walk above it. This world is not our home, and this society that is on this world is truly beneath us as Christians. We don't need to be acting like that. We don't need to blend into this society. Um, like I say, this world's not our home. It's temporary, so stand up and start acting like it. Revelation uh, chapter 21 verse 8 says, uh, But as for the cowardly and the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Just by being cowardly, we are lumping ourselves in with the worst of the worst. We are lumping ourselves in with the rapists, the pedophiles, the murderers, the witches and sorcerers. All by saying, I just, it's not worth a fight. It's just not worth a fight. Jesus is so loving. He never would have stood up. No, yeah, he would have. And we need to start truly diving into the Word to see what these men would have done. Uh, Jesus told us in John chapter 15, verse 18, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. <clears throat> so maybe that's what we need to start striving for. Maybe we should want this world to hate us. Paul said that he gloried in his tribulations. And the reason he gloried in it is because it brought him closer to Christ. Uh, we can really take lessons from some of the great men in this Bible uh, and use them. Start taking notes on what they did. 
there have been so many men and women who have laid down their lives for their faith in Jesus. And the day is approaching where we may very well be faced with the same. Not may. We will be faced with the same. I don't know that it will happen in our generation, but I'm fairly certain it will. And if not, guess what? Prepare your kids because they're going to need to have stronger faith than we do. Um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, we need to dive into the Word and start taking notes because there are some real live superheroes in here and I'm going to talk to y'all about three of them two of them were martyrs and one of them was a sacrifice uh, we're going to start out with Simon so Simon went from being a fisherman to a fisher of men uh, and he was renamed Peter he was Jesus' very first disciple and the most outspoken disciple uh Peter went from being a disciple to an apostle. For those who, those of y'all that don't know, the difference between a disciple and an apostle is uh, a disciple is a follower of. An apostle is someone who is sent forth. Uh, in this case, <clears throat> sent forth to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, back to Peter. Jesus told him that he was going to be the rock on which he built his church, and he truly lived up to that name it in fact his name even means rock his new name that jesus gave to him it's like petra or something like that i'm probably saying it wrong but uh according to acts i mean back up sorry <laughs> peter peter went through a lot he took beatings and i mean for peter to take a beating that's that's some stuff right there <laughs> Peter was a very strong man. He was a very outspoken man. He was a fisherman. Fishermen back in the day, uh, think of oil-filled workers today. They're rough, they're crude, they're dirty, they're a man's man. Doesn't mean they're a Jesus man, but they're a man's man. They, they don't take no crap at all. And chances are, if you give them any, they're going to be in a fight. Well, take that kind of attitude and magnify it by ten because fishermen were constantly at war with each other back then just to get fish to put food on the table and uh, money in their pocket. And like I say, Jesus saw fit to take this rough and crude man and make him his first disciple and make him the rock on which he is going to build his church. Um, but anyway, like I say, that's why for him to take a beating and persecution and imprisonment willingly, all for his faith, that's amazing. That just shows his true faith in Christ. The fact that if the world hated you, it hated uh, Jesus before. But anyway, according to Acts chapter 5, verse uh, 41, Peter rejoiced that he was counted worthy to suffer shame for his name, meaning Jesus. And then finally, Peter was killed for his uh, faith. He was killed by the emperor Nero, and he was crucified. Uh, but even in the act of death, Peter held up the position of a godly man and went out as such too. Not only was he crucified, but he was crucified upside down. And the odd thing is, most people skim over this. That wasn't Nero's decision to crucify him upside down. That was Peter's. Peter asked to be crucified upside down because he didn't see fit, see himself worthy to die the same death as Jesus did. So, all right. Now, uh... That pretty well covers Peter. That's like a way brief over overview. Y'all need to go read about Peter. Now we'll move on to a very wicked and bad man named Saul of Tarsus. This man was a Pharisee. He was an upholder of the law. In his own words, he was a Jew of Jews. He persecuted Christians and he sanctioned their deaths. He's, he's a big part of why there were martyrs in the first place. And then one day he is on the road to Damascus and Jesus reached down and knocked him in the dirt. 
blinded him and turned his whole life around. Jesus saw a fire in this man, a zealousness that just needed to be redirected towards the right thing. You see, Paul saw at the time, Saul suffered from a lot of the same things. He was indoctrinated. <clears throat> he, uh, he believed wholeheartedly in what he was doing until Jesus showed him the right way. Um, anyway, so after that, a few other things happened, but Paul spent three years in the deserts of Arabia having the, having the gospel of Jesus uh, revealed to him. It wasn't taught to him. It was just revealed. It, uh, whereas it's, it's in Galatians chapter 1 that it tells about all this, but it says that it was not taught to me and it is not of man. It was revealed. Now, I don't really understand the nuances of that, but I'm, I'm taking it that God just showed him everything, and instantly he had it down. He knew it. Uh, well, instantly, three years. But anyway, um, Paul, uh, after that, he joined up with the other apostles in Jerusalem, and uh, he's another one that, suffered a lot for his faith um he had to run from people who were trying to kill him at just about every single turn i mean the jews had just risen up against him and were trying to kill him like everywhere he went he had jews from asia coming to kill him and uh a lot of the times he'd have to backtrack miles in his journey and that don't sound like much to you and me but you got to figure this man was either on a donkey, a horse, or his two feet. That's a lot. He took beatings. He was yet again imprisoned for his faith. But he didn't care. He kept on preaching. He, he kept on writing letters to the different churches. And not only that, I've heard stories about him converting his prison guards to Christianity. How crazy is that? How awesome is that? In Romans uh, chapter 5, verses 3 through 6, Paul says, We glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. At the end of uh, Paul's earthly life, he was martyred for his faith in Jesus Christ as well, yet again by the Emperor Nero. He was beheaded. Uh, Paul knew that this was coming also in, uh, where is it, in uh, his second letter to Timothy. So 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, he says, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at, the day, at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them that also love his appearing. That's the type of faith this man had. He knew he was about to die. He knew he was about to be killed in, in a brutal fashion because I'm sure it wasn't just a quick, clean, easy beheading. Nero was a very evil, sadistic man. Nero burned Christians and called them candles to light his garden. Excuse me. Uh, so if y'all want to live a life free of cowardice, Look at these two men and take notes. Follow their example. This is a fallen world, and we have very few good examples. Uh, so you got to take them. The ones that we have, the ones that we were given in this Bible, you got to take them. Uh, now let's talk about the most important man. He was not a martyr. He was a sacrifice. He died and shed blood to cover our sins, to save our souls, because we weren't capable of being even following a law that God 
put forth to where we could be saved. Um, this man is God's only son. His name is Jesus. Now, Jesus led a fairly short life. He was crucified when he was only 33. During his life, he spoke and taught with the authority of God. Jesus shook the hierarchy of the Jewish religion. He changed their whole setup, and that's why the Pharisees and the Sadducees hated him so much. They, uh, they tried to trip him up at every turn, every single turn, asking him just ignorant little questions like, well, this woman's an adulterer. You gonna stone her? And he said, no, I'm not going to, but how about y'all do it? First one that's without sin, throw the first rock. I tell you what, nobody was brave enough to pick up a rock because even the Pharisees and the Sadducees, even as wicked as they were, knew that they were not without sin. So, uh, they, they decided to lead a revolution of sorts. They stirred up the people so much that they finally got backing to crucify him. They uh, crucified him for him claiming to be the king of the Jews, which he never claimed. Uh, but the Romans were afraid of a riot, basically, and they didn't have enough men to contain that riot. Pontius Pilate didn't even want to do it. He literally washed his hands in front of all the Jews as a symbol of saying, the blood be not on my hands. Now, does it, that make Pontius Pilate a good man? No, it doesn't. He could have stopped it. He knew better. He should have stopped it. Well, I say he should have. That's that's the earthly man in me. Um, it had to happen. It, it had to. Otherwise, if it was stopped, we'd all... <laughs> <laughs> We'd have no hope. <laughs> so, but uh, Jesus suffered more and worse than any martyr ever has. Uh, in the span of a day, this man was beaten by fists, rods, whips, cat of nine tails. He was beaten to the point that he was unrecognizable. Then he had a crown of thorns shoved onto his head. I'm sure it cut him down to the bone, literally. Um, he was then forced to carry his own cross. While on the cross, that wasn't the end of his suffering. As a symbol of the sin that he was dying to cover up, to shed blood to, so we could be forgiven, he had to endure his father God turning his back on him. That's something that we have never experienced. God is always there for us because of what Jesus did. But Jesus had to endure God turning away from him as payment for all the sins. And yet this man showed not one single ounce of cowardice. Not one shred of it at any point he could have called angels down to rescue him and he didn't he chose to stay there to save us his final words on the cross uh recorded in luke chapter 23 verse 46 were father into my hand into thy hands i commend my spirit and having said thus he gave up the ghost now he is our risen savior he did suffer death but he conquered it he came back three days later, and then he was here for a while, giving the apostles instructions, and then he went home. He went home to heaven to live with his father, and now we have the Holy Spirit here with us. Um, these three men are shining examples of how to live a life free from cowardice. We have absolutely zero reason to feel fear towards men. The King James Version of the Bible has fear not 170 times in there. So let's quit concerning ourselves with the opinions of man, with, with society, with whatever they may do to us. And let's start concerning ourselves with the opinion of Jesus Christ. That's about all I got for y'all today. That one was a... Whew, that was something right there, but 
I love all y'all, and y'all have a blessed day.